I'm back, baby! Wish we could turn back time To the good old days When the mom was saying us to sleep But now what's to stop? Today's an important day, uh, my own Padawans. I'm officially re-entering uh, the TTC. Thought this was a good week to come back. Um, I've been dealing with a lot of uh, shit lately. Um, that's why I couldn't do it for the first half of the season. But now that the bye week's over, and we got the rap birds to deal with, I'm back. Raven's Red Zone. Coming after you. Did Yins really think I could go a whole year without talking shit about the shitty Rappers team, Bob and Kevin? Did you really think that you guys could beat the Steelers this week? Sure, we might have lost some shitty games to some shitty teams. And even a team right now who's uh, one of the best teams in the NFC. Uh, which is hard to say because I'm around... The Philadelphia area. Philly just lost to Dallas. Dallas is the real deal. So is Philly. So don't talk shit about that game. And even to bring up a game where I knew it was going to be a struggle going into, but I was pleasantly surprised with the outcome of the game and the overall performance. I'm talking about the New England Patriots game. Landry Jones hasn't been the best quarterback for us. You're right. I even believe that. He's not a starting quarterback in the league. He's a mediocre backup. And then look at what he did against the Patriots. One of the best teams in the NFL right now. A Super Bowl contending team every single year. And that was still when they had Jamie Collins. And sure, you want to bring up how we lost to the Dolphins and how you couldn't believe that we lost to them when they were, uh, I think, a 1-4 in four or 1-3 in three record at the time, they also did not have the amount of injured players that we did. And while I know injuries are not an excuse, year in and year out, the Steelers seem to win against the big name teams and the important games, but lose to the shitty teams, especially the Baltimore Rappers. This will be the year. That we change that curse for good. We are both coming off a bye week. Both the Rappers and the Stillers. But you know what? I would take my team after a bye week over yours any day. We are coming back with a healthy, fast, physical defense. Who may have some weaknesses, but overall... I consider to be one of the best, at least, run defenses in the league. Bet you forgot about Cam Hayward. Our defense is young and fast and rapidly emerging. We have arguably one of the best front defensive lines in pro football. We have... Cam Hayward, who's the anchor to that defensive line, who's just coming off an injury, but will play this Sunday. I know he will. You also have a rookie, Javon Hargrave, who's slowly emerging in his rookie season. He's past that rookie wall. He's fast, he's physical, he can get to the quarterback, but he can also stop the run. And then you have Stefan Tuitt, who is emerging in the first couple of years that he's in the league. He's big, and he's physical. You're talking about Terrence West running all over us? Try again. Ain't gonna happen when Cam Hayward shows up on Sunday with that number 97 on his back. That defensive line is anchored by who else? 
but Cam Hayward. Cam Ironhead Hayward, who is coming off of an injury, a hamstring injury, but will play on Sunday. And at the nose guard position, you have a young, emerging defensive tackle by the name of Javon Hargrave out of South Carolina State. Not only can Javon Hargrave stuff up the middle and stop the run, but has great hands and is able to get to the quarterback because he is fast and physical. Then you have the beast from Notre Dame, Stefan Tuitt, who is emerging in the first couple of years of his National Football League professional career. Then you look at the inside linebacker position when you have Ryan Shazier and Lawrence Timmons. Ryan Shazier has struggled with some injuries in his career, but when healthy, he is by far one of the best inside linebackers in the league. He's fast, has a knack for getting to the football, and is able to drop back in coverage. Then you have Lawrence Timmons, who is one of the most reliable players on Pittsburgh's defense. You move to the outside linebacker position, which, in my opinion, is the weakest part of our defense. You have Arthur Motes, Anthony Ciccolo on one side, and then you have James Harrison and Jarvis Jones on the other. You look at the veterans, Arthur Motes and James Harrison. James Harrison, less snaps, but is productive when he's in. Arthur Motes, always applying constant pressure to the quarterback, despite his lack of sacks. You have Jarvis Jones, fourth year outside linebacker from Georgia, who has slowly but surely started to show some improvement with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And is always around the football. And then you have Anthony Chicklow from the U, who has shown some improvement this couple years with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then you look at our defensive backs, our corners, and our safeties. At the corner position, you have some young guns with Artie Burns out of Miami and Ross Cockrell out of Duke. Behind them, you have William Gay, a veteran. Artie Burns out of Miami has slowly become a dominant force on our defense, having breakout games in games such as New England and my favorite game, Kansas City. Then you have Ross Cockrell out of Duke, who we picked up last year and had a couple of splash plays last year, but has really shown to be a lockout corner for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then you got big play Will Gay, who's been covering a lot of the slot receivers in recent games and has become an influence to the young players on the defensive back core. Behind them are the safeties. Our safeties include Mike Mitchell, who is a physical, downhill type of safety. And then behind him, you have, at the strong safety position, a couple of people battling for that spot. Mainly, Rob Golden and Sean Davis. All of which have been emerging in our defense. And has been really a huge help in play with the big shot down the field. Let's not even get started with our offense run by, most likely, Big Ben, A.B., Le'Veon Bell, Darius Green, Jesse James, and our stellar offensive line. You know it, I know it, and I'm most likely sure the rest of the world knows that the Pittsburgh Steelers offense, when Ben's healthy, is the most explosive offense in the National Football League. That is single down in my mind. And you look at your defense who is still young, just like ours, but is not nearly as strong. Terrell Suggs can never seem to stay healthy. And most of your defense hasn't been able to keep up with some of the decent teams in the league this year. You look at who your losses are to. You lost to the Raiders, 28-27, which I'll give you is a tough game. But the Raiders are Super Bowl contender team this year. You lost to the Redskins, who suck this year. 
just tied with the Bengals. And you know that's when that's bad. You lost to the Giants. We're a mediocre team year in and year out. Especially this year. You lost <laughs> to the Jets, who we demolished this year with half our team injured. You lost to them 24 to 16. That's bad. And your offense is decent. But your biggest threat is Mike Wallace, who all he has is speed. C. Smith has lost some production this year. Your tight ends are probably your biggest threat. Your running backs aren't going to be able to run against us when we have Cam Hayward anchoring that defensive line. You have Joe Flacco, who is a decent starting quarterback in the league. But you put him up against Pittsburgh in our defense, it's not even going to be a matchup. My bold prediction is that Artie Burns will be covering Mike Mitchell for a good majority of the game. And he will win that battle because he has tremendous speed, athleticism, and recovery time. You talk about how our kicker, Chris Boswell, sucks. He's missed three field goals this entire year, two of which were in that game against New England. One was against Philadelphia. He is 7 for 10. That's good for a kicker in the league. This is going to be a primetime game. It always is. No matter the records of either team, you go in playing like you were 0-0. Zero and zero. And the Steelers will come out on top and break that curse this year. It's a Sunday afternoon game at 1 o'clock. And is the game of the week, in my opinion. I will give you that. But you will not win this game. With that being said, Ravens dead zone. I wish both teams the best of luck. And I have utmost respect for both teams. Because it always is a tremendous game. I am so happy I am joining the TTC. And I welcome all competition with open arms. Just realize... I'm not going to be easy on you every week. Go Steelers, fuck the Ravens, and may the steel be with you.